Hello, I'm Jason and I'm Bach, baby. Today, we are building amps on Bubble. Why? Because we love it. If you're new here on the channel, I teach non-technical people like myself how to build apps without writing one line of code. So if you're non-technical and you regret not ever learning how to code, I'm going to need you to sit down, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and yell out, no regrets. Open your eyes. Do you feel better? Today, we're building a like system for the Instagram clone that we've been working on here on the channel. No code required. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Here's the mighty Instagram clone we've been working on. First, I'm gonna open up my elements tree and I'm gonna show a couple of my groups here. Let's show stories and posts. And we have these little hearts on our posts. And I want to give them to you. I want to give you my heart. If you know Instagram, you know these are used to like the post. When the user clicks it, I want a few things to happen here. A, I want the heart to turn red. I want the user to see if they have liked the post or not. And B, I want this number here, this count of likes on each post, I want that to go up every time a user likes the post or go down every time they unlike a post. First up, we need to add a new field to our posts data type. I'm gonna head over to the data tab. And in data types, I'm gonna to go to post, create a new field. The field name is going to be called likes. And this field is going to be a list of users who have liked this particular post. So the field type is going to be user and we're going to check this field is a list. So this field is going to hold every user who has liked this post. Create that field. Okay, great. Let's head back to design. Next up, we're going to create a workflow, something that happens when the user actually clicks the heart. First up, let's open our preview. Okay, this opened up full screen, but we built this as a mobile app. So I'm going to use my developer tools here in Chrome, more tools, developer tools, and I'm going to put this on a mobile device. And if you're wondering how to do this, all you got to do is choose this iPhone 6, 7, 8 plus option underneath the dimensions. Um, if you choose other options like, oh, well, that one works. If you chose like this one, for example, it doesn't actually have the phone outline. Um, so I choose this six, seven, eight plus. Okay, so right now, if you click on this heart, nothing happens because we don't have any workflow set up here yet. It's just an icon. Now, if you're wondering how this Instagram clone got to this point, this video is actually part of a series and you can go back and watch it from the start where we actually created this app from scratch. Okay, let's create our workflow. I'm gonna click on my heart. I'm gonna click start edit workflow. Now when the user has clicked the heart, I want to add it to that list, that field that we created, the likes field in the post data type, which is a list of users. So I'm gonna add an action, data things, make changes to a thing. The thing I wanna change is the parent group's post, but I'm not seeing it here. And it's because I haven't set a data type on the group yet. So let's go back to design for a second. This icon is in a group called group post likes and stuff. I'm gonna click reveal an element tree just so I can see what else is going on here. Open this up. Okay, here's my heart. Here's a group. Here's another group. So I'm gonna make sure that this outer group has a type of content, which is post, and the data source will grab from the parent group's post. And then this inner group, same thing. 
we want to move that parent groups post down the line and make sure all the groups have a type of content. So now back in the workflow, when I make changes to a thing, I can change the parent groups post. I'm going to change another field and that field is going to be the one we just created likes. And since it's a list field, I have the option to add, remove, set list, add list, remove list, clear list. We want to add because we want to add a user to the list, the user that clicked on the heart. So add, who are we adding? The current user. Now we only want this to happen if the user hasn't liked the post yet. If they have liked the post already, we want to do the opposite. We want to remove them from the list. So I'm going to put a condition on this workflow only when parent groups post likes doesn't contain current user. If the list of users who have liked the post doesn't already contain the current user, then they haven't liked the post yet. So in that case, we're going to add them to the list. Let's copy this, this workflow and paste. So we've duplicated it and we're going to do the opposite. Open up the workflow this time only when contains. So if the user has already liked this post or they exist in that list, then we're going to remove them from the list because now they are unliking the post. So on step one, make changes to post. We're not going to add, we're going to remove. Okay, so when a user clicks a heart, only one of those workflows is going to run depending on the conditions we set up. If they have already liked the post, then it will unlike. And if they have not liked the post, then it will like. Let's try it out. First, I'm going to make sure that I'm signed in as a user. So I'm going to sign in as I'm Bach, baby. I'm going to go to data, app data, users, run as I'm Bach. Okay, let's put on our emulator again. Okay, so I'm going to click the heart on this picture of my dog, Luna, because she has a nice bum. Weird things to say. Heart. What happened? Did a workflow run? I'm not sure yet because I also want to make that heart red if they have already liked it. But right now we have no indication of if the user has liked this post or not. But we can look in the database. So let's go back. Data. App data. Posts. Click on this. Luna post, and you can see in the likes field, I have liked the post, so I am in the list. Great. What happens if I click it again? I got removed from the list. Cool. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to add a condition to that heart icon to make sure it turns red if the user has already liked the post. So we know if we've liked the post or not. Let's open up our heart. We're going to go to conditional. We're going to define another condition. When the parent groups post likes contains current user, same condition we used in the workflow. Then we're going to change the icon color to red. Now I can just make this heart destructive red, but what if I want the exact color code that Instagram uses on their hearts? How would I get that color? You know what this calls for? The Be Awesome, Wicked and Cool Quick Tip Segment. I'm Jason and welcome to the Be Awesome, Wicked and Cool Quick Tip Segment. Today's tip, how do you get the color code from an image? Step one, find the image get the URL. We're going to search for Instagram heart. We're going to go to images. That looks like the color we want. I'm going to click it. I'm going to right click it. 
and I'm going to open the image in a new tab. Here it is. Now I have a URL. Great, let's copy that. Step two, Google get hex code from image. Get hex code from image. You will have a few different options here. I just use this first one. Step three, paste the URL. I'm gonna click use your image. I'm gonna go to image URL. I'm gonna paste my image URL. Okay. Step four, get the color. I'm gonna put my mouse on the color I want. I'm gonna copy this hex code. I'm going to go back to my bubble app and this icon color, open that up, paste in the hex code. And there you have it, Instagram Red. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip. Don't forget, be awesome, wicked, and cool. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that uh, quick tip segment we had there from Jason. Let's see if our heart actually turns red here. I'm going to heart this. Ooh, it did turn red, but it didn't fill. That's because this icon is only an outline. So I also want to change the actual icon. And this time, instead of the open heart, we're going to use the full heart because my heart is full for you look at that unlike like unlike like next thing we need to do this says liked by 10,000 users is that correct no why because this is actually hard-coded. <gasps> Don't say the word code. It is forbidden on this channel. Unless it is followed by the word no. Or without. Hard code just means not dynamic. It's literally just typed in. Watch this. I clicked on liked by 10,000 users. Here I put liked by 10,000 users. So we need to make that number dynamic so that it changes as the number of likes change on the post. How do we do that? Take out this hard-coded number. Click on insert dynamic data. Click on parent groups post. Likes. And we're going to get the count. What does that mean? It's going to count the number of users who have liked this post, which is exactly what we want. Let's test it out. Liked by one user. Liked by no users. Okay, what happens if I sign in as another user? Will it go up to two? This time I'm going to sign in as Ellie and Luna. Look at that. Liked by two users. Isn't it beautiful? That's all folks. Did you guys notice my new setup? New setting? New camera? New microphone? I'm ramping up. So stick around, subscribe, turn on notifications because there is more content coming your way. P.S. If you go to www.buildappswithoutcode.com slash Instagram clone, I will send you the link to this exact bubble project in view only mode so you can click around do whatever you want and see exactly how we built this you're awesome don't forget it much love peace